Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanas. In the last episode, we added ourselves a very simplistic GUI system. All it was was a very simplistic introduction to GUI. It ran long, however, and I didn't get through all the things that I wanted to do. Uh, in the last episode, we simply added ourselves an image, so you can see how to do it, and we added ourselves a slider. In today's episode, what I'd like to do is a number of different things. I would like to add in the code to actually affect the slider itself, so we can see whenever the player is taking damage. I'd also like to add a damage indicator screen the screen that flashes whenever the character takes damage. It'll give a, a, a secondary um, uh, uh, visual cue to the, the player that they've been hurt in some way. All right, guys, so let's get started. Okay, so we added ourselves in this, uh, this slider last episode and this image, and right now it's a really, really basic, basic uh, GUI, right? It doesn't even do anything. If I play the game, my player takes damage, nothing actually happens. What I want to do is I want to make a couple of quick adjustments to our player health script in order to be able to have this thing actually trigger. If I hit play right now, like I said, I hit play, there's my guy, yeah, I can still shoot, yeah, yeah, I can still shoot, but watch, I'm going to take damage. Ouch, what happened? I don't know, it doesn't show me down here. Nothing else on the screen happened, and that's not what we want. We want to make sure that there are plenty of different indicators to our player they've been damaged. Otherwise, the information is really useless, and there's no way they can make a decision on whether or not they want to do something in the game without having these visual cues. So, let's start off right away. We're going to open up on your, on your soldier, uh, find your soldier or whatever character you're using, and find your player health script and open it up. Um, right now, our player health script is extremely, extremely simplistic. There's nothing really in here. Uh, what I want to do, let's, uh, let's get rid of this space, I don't like it. Uh, I'm going to go down below this, uh, this player death effects for now, and I'm going to add in some uh, information about my, my HUD. First of all, I want to have to have a link to my, my slider. I'm going to be adjusting that slider in some way through code, so obviously I'm going to need a way to access it. I'm going to, I'm going to give it a public reference right now. So public, type, type, type. Now, if I type slider right now, watch what happens. Slider, slider joint. It didn't see actually find slider, and that's not what we're looking for at all. What we have to do is, before we can actually access any of the UI uh, data, we're going to have to go up here and add an additional using uh, unity engine dot UI. And by adding this, it's going to give us access to all of the, the Unity UI uh, uh, predefined types. All right, so now if I go back here and start typing slider, boom, there's slider, awesome, awesome. That's what I wanted to see. So with slider in there, I'm going to give this a name. Let's just call it, um, let's call it player health slider. All right, so player health slider is going to obviously be in a, a, uh, a link to the actual slider on the screen in our player HUD. Now, we're going to have to do a number of things to this player slider. First of all, we already have our player, if we take a look back here, if we take a look at this, uh, this HUD, where is it? Player canvas, open this up. If we take a look at our actual player slider right now, it doesn't have all the information that we need in it. First of all, I want it to be whole numbers, so I'm going to click that on now. Um, what I want to do, and, and the reason I'm saying whole numbers is because I know that my damage is things like, uh, I forget, what did this tank trap do? It's things like 20. Um, this one here had, had a damage rate of 10. You know, it's things like that. I'm going to be using numbers like that. I'd give my player a health of like 30 or something like that. I forget now. We can even take a look here, player. <laughs> I keep saying I forget, but I just got to find my soldier, find my player health, and see what the health I gave him was. I gave my player a health of, th yeah, 30. So I'm really dealing with whole numbers here, and, and I'm going to keep dealing with whole numbers. So first thing I'm going to do, let's go back to our slider, uh, info group, slider. Um, I really have to change this. My minimum value is 0, and my maximum value is 1. Now, obviously, I want my minimum and maximum values uh, to represent uh, 0 is fine, but the maximum value should really represent my, my player's actual health. All right, so in code, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go into my start. And I'm going to set my startup uh, to actually define those, those values. Uh, so we already know what our current health is. And, and the way we've set up our game, we've set up our current health to be equal to our maximum health. So first thing I want to do is I want to take my player health slider, bam. And I want to set its max dot max value. I want to set its max value equal to our full health. 
and full health. So basically right now we've now set our value for minimum has been zero, that's great, and our maximum value is whatever our full health is. Obviously if you want to be able to add more uh, more health later on, let's say you had armor value or something else on top of that, then you'd really want to uh, increase this to past full health. But our character, he can never go past his full health. All right, so our maximum value is going to be full health. Now as well we want to indicate, we want to set up our, our player health slider dot value. So the actual value is going to be also equal to either full health or current health. I'm going to set up to current health because later on that's what I'm going to use as my default. By adjusting the, the, the value and setting it always equal to current health, then I can always set my, my slider to the appropriate value that my, my character is at. All right, and that's all I'm going to really do in the start. So right now that's going to be initialized. We've already set up our public thing here, and we've initialized our our health slider appropriately there. There's only a couple of more small things that we really need to do in order to have this thing working properly. We already know, first of all, that we have, right down here, we have an add damage script. So we know that we're always taking damage. When, we know whenever we're taking damage, excuse me. We know whenever we're taking damage. If we're taking damage, we want to adjust our slider. That's it, it's that easy. That's what we want to do in order to indicate to our player that they've taken damage. So, right under here, where I've already set my current health, I'm going to say player health slider dot value is going to be equal to current health. That's it. All right, in doing so now, we have got our, our health slider set up to be able to, to indicate to our player that they've taken damage. I'm going to save this, file save. And now when we come back here, and as long as there's no issues, okay, nothing good, um, I'm going to hit play. And when I hit play now, watch what happens down here. So first of all, hopefully this value has been set properly. Uh, when I come, oh, no, wait, I didn't do something yet. <laughs> Something I always forget. I have to go to my soldier, my soldier, bam, and I gotta make sure that I've got a link to my slider. And the slider I want to use is obviously my player health slider. I'm just gonna drag it and I'm gonna drop it right in there. Now, when I say play, hopefully everything has been set up properly now. Our slider here should have a value between 0 and 30. Uh, this does a value of 10, so this should go down by one third when I take damage. Let's see what happens. Jump, ouch. Bam, and I've taken one third damage. And that's exactly what we want to see. All right, jump, ouch, uh-oh, one more hit and I'm done. Bam, and I'm dead. All right, great, that's exactly how it should look. Everything is working the way we expect it to. Now, the problem we've got with this, the problem we've got with this is, is that, that indicator at the bottom, that slider at the bottom is not really, really big. It's not right in your face. You know, if the player is not looking in that left-hand corner, they might not even see that, that value changes. Now, you have a couple of options. You could go through and obviously uh, allow the slider to take up more real estate space. And that is one valid option. You can make the slider very large, you know, where you're at the top, very prominent on the screen. Um, I didn't want to do that. I want to make sure that the, the, the information is, is, a very, is available and visible, but that it's not taking up too much real estate. I don't want to cover up the screen where the, where the players are looking to have, you know, information about what's around them. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this thing, a, a screen that flashes. So whenever our player takes damage, we're going to have a flashing screen. All right, let's take a look at that next. So to set up our damage indica indicator screen, we're going to have to go back. Let's go back into 2D mode, first of all. Uh, let's go to our player canvas, and let's go in here and hit F so we're looking at our entire canvas again. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Zoom, 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 zoom. All right, so really and truly what I want to do is, is above is above my uh, player info group. I don't really need it in, in below it. Right above here in my player canvas, I'm going to say create and I'm going to um, add UI. I'm going to add an image. All right, now I'm going to drag this image up so it's right below the canvas. Go up below the canvas. Go right there. All right, so the image is going to go right below the canvas. That way I can see it. Uh, and I'm going to set this thing up. First of all, uh, I'm going to call it something else. I'm going to call this player um, damage. indicator. You guys were waiting for that, weren't you? Image. <laughs> All right, player damage indicator image. Um, and right now it's in the center of the screen. Uh, I'm going to leave it centered in the screen, but I'm going to change this slightly. Uh, what I want to do, let me add the image in right away so you guys can see it. So with the image obviously selected, I'm going to go in here. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my sprites, my textures, and I'm going to find my bloody screen, which is right here. And I'm going to change it from a texture to a sprite once again. Sprite. I'm going to apply that. Now it can be used in my GUI. So basically, let me put this in place. Let me put this in place now on my image. In my image. 
right here. I'm going to put it in here, my none, and it becomes this bloody screen. Now, obviously, that's not how I want it to look. I want this, this screen not to blink around the character. I mean, that's one way of doing it. But basically, what the effect that I'm looking for is to have, have this thing fill the screen uh, for a moment and then fade away. And there's a number of different ways of doing this. You could do this uh, through an animation uh, state machine. Uh, you could do it through code. And we're going to do it through code. But first of all, let's set up this thing so it looks proper. I want this image to fill the entire screen. Now, if I go back up to the top here, we talked uh, in the last episode about this, uh, this um, uh, button right here. And clicking on it obviously brings this up. If I, if I click on here, bam, it's going to... It's going to uh, move my, my actual anchors to the edge of the screen. And that, again, will keep everything kind of centered. Now, I don't want that. I'm going to hold Shift, and I'm going to hold Alt, and you're going to see this is going to allow my image to spread out all the way to the corners of the entire thing, and it's going to remain spread out all the way to the corners uh, regardless of, of the size of the actual screen. Again, so if I go here, Free Aspect, 5.4, you can see that it is adjusting appropriately with the actual screen. Great, that's what we want it to do. We want to make sure that it's always filling our screen. And what we want to do is we want to, we want to, first of all, I'm going to set this up um, so that it's current color. Let's go down here and find our current color. Bam. I'm going to turn the alpha of this all the way to zero. All right, all the way to zero. I don't want it showing. The only thing I want to happen is is when this thing actually, um, when the character is actually damaged, I want that image to flash on the screen. And then I want to slowly fade, or, or quickly fade, I guess one or the other. Quickly fade. And uh, that's going to allow me to, uh, that's going to allow me to um, indicate to the player that something's gone wrong, and uh, it's going to be a very, very clear visual indicator. All right, so now let's take a look at the code. We're going to adjust the code in exactly the same way before. We're going to open up our player health script. This is obviously located on your player. Uh, and we're going to do a couple of things. Once again, we're going to need a, a clear link. Uh, we're going to need a clear link to our actual damage screen. All right, so let's go in here. Where's my mouse? Um, let's go into up at the top. Zoop. Uh, let's go into our HUD, and we're going to put it underneath our HUD. We're going to need something to say this is our damage screen, so I'm going to have a public. Uh, image, uh, and because we have the uh, UI available, image is available. Uh, public image, and I'm going to call this um, damage screen. That's fine, damage screen. <laughs> damage screen is fine. So once again here, we've got ourselves a, a public link to it, and that's great. Um, I'm going to have to add a few more things here that's going to allow me to change the colors. Now, the current color is uh, is slightly um, is, it's the alpha's turned all the way off, and that's what we want to do. What I want to do is I want to set up a flash color, so I'm going to add a new color, and the new color is going to be uh, we'll call it flash color, and the flash color is going to be how how bright in the screen this actual image flashes. It's going to be a new color, uh, and the new color is going to be I want it to be basically its full brightness. So I'm going to say 255. F for the red, 255. F for the uh, blue, two, sorry, for the green, uh, comma, 255. F for the actual blue. And lastly comes, oops, F for the blue. And lastly is the alpha. Now, the alpha, you can choose a value. Ugh, choose a value anywhere between a 0 and 1. Let's put it at 1 for now and see how that looks. It's going gonna, it's gonna to flash on the screen entirely, so it's going to fill the entire color of the screen. You guys can decide uh, if you want to go full brightness or just some partial brightness. I'll make it full for now, and then later on, I'll probably adjust it down to something lower, like half or something like that. Anyway, that is our flash color, so it's going to flash fully on. Um, we want to have, as well, uh, how fast it, it fades. So I'm going to have in here a float, uh, a float value that we will call, um, I don't know, Flash, flash speed. <laughs> God, I'm awful at names. Flash speed. Let's this equal to. Let's just try 5f for now. Um, that's going to be the smoothing effect on how fast it goes from. And we're going to do a color lerp from one color to the other, and it's going to. It's going to. That's going to be our basic smoothing of the from one color to the other. And lastly, we're going to need to know whether or not our player's actually been damaged, and you'll see why in a minute. So we're going to set up a bool right now that we'll call damaged. And we'll set it to false because uh, when we start off the game, we're not actually damaged in any way. And, and basically, this, this bool is going to be used to uh, create 
um, to create the the flash, and then that's what's basically used for. That's all it's used for, not to actually indicate if we've actually taken any damage. All right, so uh, with that said, everything is good at that point. Um, we're going to make some changes in our update function. And up to this point here, we actually haven't made any changes in here. So in the update itself, uh, what we're going to add in here, we're going to add in um, an if, an if situation. Um, so we're going to, are we hurt? All right, so if we are hurt, we want to go through and flash our on screen. So if damaged, and we'll just say if damaged, that means if damage is equal to true, then what we want to do, um, I'll do it like this so you guys can see it better, and add in my, both my sets of braces. Um, if we're damaged, then we want our damage indicator, what did I call it? I've already forgotten what I call it. Uh, damage screen, our damage screen. Um, we want our damage screen uh, dot color, we're going to actually change the color, uh, to be equal to our, our flash color, all right? So that means it's going to flash on the screen and its full bright brightness. Let me lower this so you guys can see it better. As its full brightness, all right? Now, that's all we're going to do in the if. Now, if we're not damaged, so if we're no longer damaged, so let's put our else in here. Uh, we don't even need the brackets. Else, we're going to put in our, our brace and our end brace uh, to make sure it's always there. That's a good habit to get into, guys. Um, if not, what we want to do is we want to go in and we want to uh, slowly move back to our original zero alpha. So if that's the case, if, if we don't have anything going on, then our damage screen dot color is going to be equal to, and we're going to use color lerp. We've used lerps before, um, so we're basically just moving from one from one color to the next. This is what a color lerp does. So we're going to be moving from our current damaged, sorry, our current damaged screen dot color. Uh, to our uh, color clear. And this is just, color clear just means make everything zero. So we're going to set it back to zero, 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 zero. All right, color dot clear. All right, and the last thing we want to do is how fast it's moving. It's going to be moving at our indicator speed. What did I call it? Let's see what I called it because I've already forgotten our damage, our flash speed, sorry. It's going to be our flash speed, flash speed times time dot delta time. All right, and we'll put our bracket and our semicolon. All right, good. Now, the next thing we want to do is make sure that we indicate that the that the damage is now false. So basically what we're going to do, let's just set it up here. Um, damaged equals false. So somewhere else below, and you're going to see it in one second, we're going to set damage equal to true. It's going to come in here. It's going to say, oh, oh, damage equal to true. Flash our color on the screen. It's going to go after that. It's going to pop out. Damage equal to false. And the next time it comes to the update, it's going to go through the color lerp. And that's great. That's exactly what we want to happen now. So with damage false here, it'll only go in here once. And after that, it'll go into the else. All right, let's go down here. And in our actual add damage at this point here, we know we've been damaged. We know we've gotten hurt. So let's add in our damaged equals true right there. So basically now what's going to happen is whenever we take damage from anything, we're going to set our damage equal to true. It's going to go into the update. The update is going to say, oh, oh, we're damaged. If it's true, therefore color flash, flash the color, come out, damage equal to false, and then we're going to lerp down. Let's file save this. Boom, and close that up. Now, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens now. Play. Play. Double play. <laughs> All right, everything looks fine. We've got ourselves full health on here. Watch what happens now when we take damage. Bam, nothing. And you know why? Because once again, I forgot to set up my actual player. Let's go back to our player soldier right here, and we have to set up our, right here, our image. Our image is gonna be the damage indicator. I'm gonna drag it, I'm gonna drop it on there. Now, when I say play, great, there's our soldier. We're all looking healthy, uh-oh, bam, and there we go, we've taken damage. It flashed on the screen once and then went away. Bam, taken damage, flash on the screen and goes away. So really and truly, you can decide if you want to use the full color or not. Uh, if you do, then that's perfectly fine. There's one last thing that I want to do. I want to make sure that if uh, if we actually uh, have taken damage, then the damage itself, the actual damage screen, if we die, the damage screen itself is going to stay on the screen. We already know when we die. We already have our make dead. Um, so let's just do this. Let's go 
into our code, bam, right here. Um, we already have our make dead in here. We're already destroying our object. Let's go in right above this, just before we destroy it, after we instantiate, it's perfectly fine. It doesn't really matter where you put it. Um, and what I basically want to do is I want to I want to turn on uh, my damage indicator here. So uh, I called it damage screen, damage screen dot color uh, equals flash color. All right, and that's all I want to do. I want to set it up so that my damage screen is equal to flash color, and I never want to lerp it back. All right, so if I say file, save, let's see what happens now. Play, play, let's just go in here and die. Damage, 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 dead. Whole thing stays on, everything is awesome. All right, guys, so that's really what I wanted to do in this episode. I wanted those th two things to happen. We've got a really good indicator. We've got our code in place to make sure that everything is now noticeable. Our players now dies appropriately. We've got a lot of indication that we're being damaged. All right. All right, guys, so that should get you moving on your GUI. I think in the next episode, what we're going to take a look at is, is pickups. So we're going to be able to affect the GUI in the opposite direction. Uh, we're going to be able to affect the GUI and add health. Or, or things like that. In fact, I think we'll do two. We're going to add health for sure, and maybe we'll even do a, a add, uh, add ammunition. All right, so we'll start taking a look at, at setting up a further GUI. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, let me know down below with a thumbs up. I'm hoping you guys are having a good time. I'm hoping you guys are, are moving along and making some really, really awesome games. I really want to see your games. I'm really looking forward to it. If you've got a game, you say, hey, my game is done. I, I went ahead and your stuff was great. I made this awesome game using your concepts. Then please send me a link. You know, Put it up somewhere where I can see it. Congregate or one of these other places. Put it up somewhere where I can see it and, uh, and send me a link. All right, guys? Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.